OK, now to some surprise reports regarding sporting head coach Ruben Amarim. West Ham are doing due diligence on a number of managers and have not commented on reports suggesting that talks are planned with Amarim. The sporting coach is currently the favourite to succeed Jurgen Klopp at Liverpool when he departs in the summer, but has not been offered that job despite rumours earlier this month. Amarim himself has said this, uh, he can't make any guarantees where his future lies, but it is looking increasingly likely that it may be in the Premier League. So interesting one, this. There was those links with West Ham. West Ham are not saying anything. Gail, just, just put this into context. Why is he so in demand? Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? Because they're two big jobs in the Premier League. Why is his name being linked with both of them? And what do we know about him? Well, he's actually only 39 years old and he finished his playing career in 2016. He did win three Portuguese league titles with Benfica and played for Portugal in every age group with 14 senior caps. 2014 was the World Cup he featured in uh, most. He took that experience that he'd gained into management initially with the third division Casapia side and that's before he took over at Braga in 2019. He won the Portuguese Cup there in his first season and then he moved to Sporting in 2020. There, he won the league and cup double in his first year. Now, Sporting hadn't won the title in 19 years, which gives you an idea of the job he did in a very short space of time. He's since won another League Cup and a Super Cup, which is the equivalent of our Community Shield. This season, if we have a look at the league table, they are seven points clear and on course uh, for another title. If they beat Porto away at Porto this weekend and Benfica fail to beat Braga, there will be uh, celebrations again in Sporting Lisbon. So in a relatively short managerial career, 39 Rob, uh, managers just getting younger and younger, he's already achieved a lot. But it's interesting that he is already being put forward to some of the, the big vacancies here in the Premier League. Yeah. Um, very young, very young girl. Uh, right. I wonder if there was eyebrows raised when this link with West Ham was floated in certain areas uh, recently. It'd be a hell of a coup. It would. Uh, wouldn't it, for West Ham to get it? Or is this just, we see it quite often, agents dropping stories here, there and everywhere, just to maybe force Liverpool's hand a little. Which way do you see it? Yeah, my eyebrows were certainly raised when I saw the reports yesterday. As you say, he's been linked with Chelsea in the past, he's been linked with Liverpool, he's been linked with Barcelona, with Xavi, possibly, probably, leaving in the summer. But I was the same as you, Rob. I was kind of thinking, where is this coming from? Is it maybe coming from Amarin's camp and they're maybe trying to smoke out interest from some of those bigger sides? Liverpool, perhaps, although there were reports yesterday that he's maybe not as high up Liverpool's list as some people thought, which makes you wonder where Liverpool are going to go since they're not going to get Xabi Alonso either. And then I also thought, oh, is it maybe coming from West Ham? They're coming off a week where they got knocked out of the Europa League. They then got thrashed by Crystal Palace. David Moyes' future really looks like it's in doubt. Are they kind of throwing a bone to the fans and saying, look, we're in talks with this hotshot manager that everybody wants in Europe. So it's an interesting one. I would be surprised. I'm impressed at the ambition but I'm intrigued to see where he does end up. It would be a huge coup for them, wouldn't it? I mean, I don't think anyone was at all surprised to see him linked with Liverpool, which I think says a lot about his, how he is seen and his potential. You know, he does look like a manager who's destined for the elite. And, um, and I'm sure West Ham and Liverpool aren't going to be the only clubs showing an interest this, uh, this summer. I mean, you look at his body of work in Portugal, as, as Gail outlined there. I mean, it's really, really impressive, the style of play as well, and the number of players he's improved. You know, there's so many players who've been through sporting in the time he's been there, who are still there now, some of them, who have just got so much better under his management. You think of Pedro Porro, of Matias Nunes, of Nuno Mendes, João Polinho, Marcus Edwards, this season, Victor Jocarez as well. So he does have that man management ability, that coaching ability, and, and he's had great success in Portugal. And it'll be uh, really, really interesting to see where he ends up next. Yeah, uh, you, you mentioned his style of play. And I'm, I'm, when you're my age, your brain takes a little longer to rack. He, he plays with wing backs. I'm thinking Conte, perhaps the last manager to, to win a league title, Premier League title playing wing backs. Uh, it's kind of gone a little bit out of fashion again. So who would it fit? Well, I think it 
it would fit West Ham in a sense in that they've played it quite a lot under David Moyes. And I think it could fit Liverpool. Obviously, they've kind of stuck quite rigidly to the 4-3-3 under Jurgen Klopp. But obviously, modern players in particular, but particularly players at the level that Liverpool have got, I think would be more than comfortable switching between different systems. But then you look at the players that Liverpool have got, Trent Alexander-Arnold as a right wing back, Andrew Robertson as a left wing back, I think that could really work. I also did look at it and think, oh, maybe Amarim's one of those managers who he's just playing 3-4-3 three, because three it suits the players at his disposal. But he's done it throughout his time at Sporting and he played three at the back at Braga. So I do think if he does move to the Premier League, that's certainly the system that he would look to favour. Maybe it's about time three at the back came back. It worked pretty well for Antonio Conte, didn't it? Certainly did. Yeah, I, mean, I think in terms of style, though, if you take out the system, I think um, I think he is a good fit for Liverpool in terms of the style that his team play. You know, they press high, they're very proactive, they try and force turnovers high up the pitch. So in that sense, it is a you can understand why Liverpool went for him. You know, that stylistically, although the system is different, the style is quite similar. I'm sure they had that in mind, and they they probably do still have that in mind. For West Ham. That would be a much bigger departure, wouldn't it? They are, under David Moyes, more kind of reactive. They sit deep, they soak up pressure. Um, and that is maybe something that the fans want to see change. They want to see a slightly more ambitious uh, style of play. So um, it's an interesting one. I think it would be for Liverpool, he could potentially continue some of the work Klopp has done, albeit in a slightly different guise. Whereas for West Ham, it would be a, a total transformation of the style, really. Mm. Yeah, um, he unleashed it, uh, changed it at the Emirates Conte, didn't he? When Chelsea were losing, went up to Hull three at the back. Chelsea went on a record-breaking winning run at the time. It's been usurped since. This all seems a little uh, distasteful or, or uncomfortable yeah. for, for David Moyes because he's still in a job, Gail, and this seems a little bit unfair. Yeah, still in a job until we know uh, the end of the season. That talk that there was a new contract uh, around Christmas time is... Uh, disappeared, hasn't it? And it was a horrible week um, for David Moyes. Um, let's have a look at some of um, his recent stats. I mean, that's from the game probably on the weekend. Um, horrible day, big defeat um, to Crystal Palace. Um, I'm hoping the stats, well, they aren't there. But what, I, <laughs> what we know is um, it's been very up and down in recent weeks. And even when the team were doing very well and they were sort of top six, the fans seemed unhappy with him. What I would say is, um, careful what you wish for, because it wasn't that long ago I was interviewing Manuel Pellegrini at the training ground and things were um, very different when West Ham moved in this direction last time and then, of course, had to bring David Moyes back when they were just hovering above a drop zone. Yeah. Um, just one win in the Premier League, isn't it, since the beginning of March? Uh, if, if you throw the by Leverkusen 1-1 one, one draw in as a defeat because they went out, it's, it's four straight defeats for them. Um, there has been this disconnect, this frustration, is that fair to say, between West Ham fans and the style of play? But if you offer West Ham fans a gl glory European night that they had last season, their memories seem to fade a little quickly, don't they? Yeah, it's like you and Gail both said, it's a little bit uncomfortable, seems a little bit unfair on David Moyes, maybe. I think it's more a reflection of where we are with the football culture and the way that teams play in the Premier League. West Ham are probably looking, West Ham fans are probably looking around at teams like Aston Villa teams like Brighton, teams like Newcastle, who they would probably consider to be their contemporaries, teams in the same kind of ballpark as them. All of those teams play pretty good football. They're probably looking at teams like Brighton, for example, actually, who traditionally haven't been as big as West Ham and thinking if they can play great football and still get into Europe and work on a smaller budget, then why can't we be a little bit more ambitious with the way that we play? But then, of course, as you say, there's the trade-off. I mean, David Moyes, I interviewed him a few months ago and it was actually the press conference where he said, yeah, there's a contract on the table, but I'm not going to sign it until the end of the season. I don't know what I'm going to do. And he did seem quite content with the job that he had done at West Ham and the place that he was in. I think he thinks that he's done a good job. And he, he always references the fact that West Ham are now regulars in Europe, which they certainly weren't before he left. And it won't always be the case after he goes. So like Gail says, maybe it is a case of be careful what you wish for. I think he's right to say he's, he's done a good job. I mean, you know, it's been an incredible period, hasn't it? I mean, winning first trophy and 
in however many years, it was 43 years, I think, wasn't it? A, a European trophy, it's an incredible legacy to leave behind. And not just winning that trophy, but also getting the club to, to challenge in Europe for, you know, on a, on a regular basis is a, is a serious achievement. There are these questions about the style of play and, and there is a feeling that maybe it is, a, is a, a time for a change. But if he does go, and it is a big if at this point, he will leave a, a fantastic legacy at the club.